All right, everyone, and we're back. I um I had a rough week. Well, I always have a rough week, so that's not really news to anybody. But I had an especially rough week because my hillbilly jeans have reared their head. Their fucked up little inbred heads are causing drama in my life. Your so, hillbilly jeans? Well, so I think I said on another episode, like I'm, I consider myself 25% hillbilly because my father's father's family is backwoods. Like they're backwoods Kentucky, Pennsylvania people. Um, and I have some good genes from them, but I feel like all of my weird physical problems, I feel like come from like, it's like weird shit, like things that like would make you think that maybe like, you know, three or four generations ago, a first cousin fucked another first cousin. And now that gene has mutated and is causing some strange things in your life. Like I have flat feet, um, which isn't like a huge problem, but uh, you have to get like really nice. You have to get good sneakers and you sometimes get like those, those inserts, you know what I mean? Um, and if not, like, it's not just your feet, it just fucks up your whole back. So anyway, I have these like messed up flat feet and someone told me that there's a place in LA where you can go get custom made orthotics and it's like not that expensive. But I, so I look it up online and it says that it's custom made orthotics and also custom made prosthetics. And you can see it like a man in the photo, like getting his fake leg, like measured for him. Okay, we, those two things cannot share a storefront. That is so fucked up to the poor people who are getting prosthetics. Like, imagine going there and you walk in and there's like an amputee who's probably like a veteran who lost his leg doing something like brave and serving our country in Fallujah. And he's there with his whole family. Like, it's a huge moment, you know? And he's like waiting to get an entire limb, like to get his prosthetic leg brought out just so he can like semi walk again. And then I walk in, I'm like, hey, I'm here to pick up my custom made insoles because my $130 sneakers don't have quite the right amount of comfort. Like if that man picked up his prosthetic leg and beat the shit out of me with it, would you even feel bad? I wouldn't feel bad for me. Like why are those two things in the same place? I wonder if you can get one of those handicap uh, signs for your car. <laughs> They just throw that in with the custom made orthotics. Yeah. They're like, here, we gave one to him. We might as well give one to you too. Like pe- like people picking up artificial limbs should not have to share like the same store with us pussies who are just looking to have squishier shoes. Like that is so not fair to them. Like I feel like people like me, we should shamefully have to pick ours up from the back door between the hours of like 1 and 4 a.m. and only on Tuesdays. Like it should be a shameful experience for you that that's why you're coming into the same spot. Like, imagine if they had, um, like, chemotherapy and Botox in the same doctor's office. And, like, you walk into the room and they're like, oh, are you here for your radiation therapy today? And you're like, no, just here to get rid of these frown lines. Don't want to be looking weathered and sat in, like, a room full of fucking cancer patients. No, you can't, like... Those things are not the same. They should be separate, dude. So, yeah, but so now I'm like too afraid to go because I'm like, if I go in at the same time as someone getting like an, an artificial limb, it'll probably be like a God forbid, it'll be like a kid too. I'll hate myself forever. So, but yeah, so I have to get some inserts from somewhere because I have the flat feet, pushy bitch feet that I have that don't are good for nothing. Are you talking about just like Dr. Scholl's here? Can you just go to like a Walmart and buy those? No, those are for like semi-normal people. Like you have to get like real or like it's and they're expensive too. Like you can get insurance to cover it. It's such a weird I, I had to get to... those when I was a kid because I used to walk like Tommy Pickles. My my feet would, you know. Yes, that's what happens. Oh, you're like, yeah. op- almost, not like bow legged, but like you're on your way. You're like well yeah. on your way. They're not, they're not straight. You want to, you know, you want them to be straight. Oh my God. I was going to say like, did you have any weird childhood um, like health things or ailments? I guess that's that's one of them, right? That, that was basically it. That and uh, I was told I was fat and I don't think I was fat. I, you I, vehemently disagree yeah, to the fat comment. I look at pictures when I was a kid. I was like, I was not fat. Oh, my God. That is like, how, how many years of therapy did it take to undo that? <laughs> Zero. That <for> you? <laughs> You're just winging it at this point? Yep. Oh, my God. I, um, well, my, vi- my vision is also trash. I don't, did you, I had a lazy eye growing up. Did you know that about me? I seen a picture of you as a kid with an eye patch. Yes. So that's like. And it's like, who the fuck, like, who has a lazy eye and how are you going to explain that shit to people? But, it happens. Oh, yeah. But as a kid, it was like, 
So actually, like, this is one of the first jokes I ever told on stage was about the lazy eye. But I so I had a lazy eye and I also wore glasses. So I had to wear like an eye patch. And my mother picked out an eye patch with a gigantic unicorn emblazoned across the front. Because I guess she was like, oh, like, you know, how do we make her look, you know, how do we hide this? Oh, I know. Let's just slap a giant mythological creature right on the front of her eye. So, um, so yeah, uh, elementary school was, was a pleasant experience for me. Like, and what, what, you had surgery to get rid of that or how did that work? Yeah, that's exactly what happens is like what, you like wear it and you're supposed to try to tr- basically train the weaker eye to get stronger. And if a couple years go by, it doesn't work, then you go in for surgery. And luckily it was, um, you know, successful. So mm-hmm. it fixed the lazy eye. Oh yeah. I had a friend in high school that had the same issue, but he kept going to surgery like four different times and it, it couldn't Oof. correct no. Oh no, yeah. that's so sad. Now I feel like a piece of shit for complaining with my nice <laughs> new eye. No, there's worse things. You know, if you have a lazy eye, who cares? I, yeah, I mean, it would like it was whatever. But my mom would get like typical my mother, like strong Italian woman, like you know doesn't take anybody's shit. Would get so irritated when we would go out in public and people would just ask me like what was wrong. And it's true, like I don't know like what kind of fucking moron is like asking a kid like what's wrong with your eye I would mm-hmm. never do that yeah. but people would my mom would be like I was seven years old and she'd be like tell people you got your eye shot out I'm like ma I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell she was like tell them you got your eye shot out I'm like okay also I don't think I could survive that by the way like yeah the bu- the bullet is still lodged in halfway inside my brain but yeah she was nuts we were like in shop right one day and the cashier asked and that's what she told me to say and i was like i was so mortified but, but you said you needed glasses too so do you still do you have contacts or i do, yes and my prescription is like insanely strong if I, so I, if i'm not wearing my contacts or glasses like you could put oprah and mike pence in front of me and i could not tell you who's who really oh it's bad dude wow. like this is a true story like one time i had mistaken um a bat for a moth Cause I didn't have my glass. So I was at my aunt's house. Like, I don't know. I was like 13 years old. I was sleeping over. It's dark. I'm in bed and I have like the ceiling fan on and, uh, no glasses. So I look up and I just kind of see like a flash of a brown wing. So immediately my brain was like, Oh, it's a moth. Um, I didn't think bat. I didn't even think bats had the skill set required to like bust into a house. So I didn't know that was like a thing. I'm from Jersey, not like, you know, the Amazon. So I didn't fucking know. So I go down again, my aunt and we're walking back up the stairs and we see something hanging from the ceiling vent. And like, we both kind of like, you know, like at the same time, like we're like, what? And then it hit both of us at the exact same time as to like what it is. And then we were like two cartoons, like tripping over each other down the stairs because we both, we can't even deal with the bug. Like we were like, holy shit. And we like locked ourselves in my uncle's office and called my dad to come over and like take care of it. And she was like, I, like how fucking big do you think moths grow to be? <laughs> that you saw that even- I've seen some big ass moths. So right? I, I don't think you're that crazy. I think- I've seen some crazy giant moths. Uh, yeah, I was like, I was so embarrassed too. I was like, shit. Um, <laughs> and th- and that's when I knew. I'm like, wow. Like I re- like you really can never be without, um, you know, your contacts, or your glasses. I wear contacts too. It, they're the best thing in the world, almost the worst thing. The in worst. The world. Awful. Mm. Just they constantly fall out, irritate your eyes. You can't sleep with them. All that shit. I know. And I have like the works too. Like I have like, it's a strong prescription. It's not the same in both eyes. I have astigmatism, the fucking like lazy eye. Like, I, maybe that'll come back. Who knows? You know, mm-hmm. can that happen? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> and my grandfather had glaucoma when he was older. So I'm like, I'm sure that's what's next. But like, j- if you just think about those two things are like flat feet and like lazy eye, you'd think my ancestors were like the family in Texas chainsaw massacre. Like you'd be like, th- so is that the genes? Like Leatherface was your great, great grandfather with your weird ass feet and your your bow legs and or have you ever seen I feel like this is like a little bit more dated but have you ever seen Deliverance or do you know what it is yeah oh yeah I, I used to tell people about like my Pensatuckian family and they used to be like oh have you seen Deliverance and at that point I didn't and then I watched and I was like oh fuck this probably is what they were like yeah you think it's accurate yeah oh yeah some banjo players oh some big band yeah with the cross eye it, like yeah it's oh no it like I feel like we should have, like, maybe when we interview my father, like, we'll have him tell some of the stories. But the stories, like, I never really spent time there growing up. But obviously my father and his three brothers did, like, in a trailer park. And, like, the the stories they tell about the things that went on, like, there are, like, some weird-ass people out there, too. Like, just living a completely different life than the rest of us. Like, I think I said on the last pot, like, I had an uncle who literally his whole 
um, diet consisted of Slim Jims, Bar Nuts, and Carnation Instant Breakfast. And then also they were big drinkers, like big. And that, obviously that's where I get, my, I'm assuming that's where I get mine from too. Never heard of a vitamin, dude. Didn't go to doctors. Like, You're not eating Slim Jims these days? No, do please. I love Slim Jims. Do you? Love them. I'm going to put this out there with like the fact that you also like Spam, which is very... Love Spam, love Slim Jims. But your mother's Puerto Rican. She must have fed you well growing up, and now this is what you've resorted to? And then what? before we were recording, you said, what did you get for $2 yesterday from... $2.30 for Leap Day was a large pizza from 7-Eleven. Oh, my God. I'm so... like The acid is just building up my oh, stomach yeah. thinking of it. Yep. I had half of it for dinner, half of it for breakfast. Two. Al, I tell you, you better double up on the Prilosec tonight. That is so, <laughs> that is so upsetting to me. It was good. I can't. No, I'm sure it was good. I'm secretly jealous because I can't eat anything anymore. No. But like that, please, my stomach would probably just like open up and walk out of my body. I'd be like, fuck it, we give up. Like, are you kidding? That's what you're feeding us now, dude. Like we're kicking back <laughs> chicken broth and now you're giving us $3 pizza from 7-Eleven. $2.60. Two, I'm sorry, $2.60. We, we're sponsored. Pie. We're sponsored by Seven Eleven. That's what he's oh, that, talking about. Oh, that would be a deal. Oh, we can get free. We can get it free every week yep. in Slurpees. <laughs> I know. You know what? It's like I don't need to be the perfect specimen. Like, but I just want to be good enough so that if the aliens invade, they'll want to keep me around. Like that's the that's how I gauge it. You know, like I don't have to be the best, but I want to be good enough that they don't want to just eradicate me like the minute that this the ship lands, you know. And aliens hate flat feet and lazy eyes. They do, uh, yeah, that's my that's my fear. It like, keeps me up at night, dude. I like but you know what though, to, like to your point, like we don't even know what they want. We don't know what they'll want. Like we have no idea what kind of attributes they'll be looking for. Like if it's big boobs and comedy, like I'm they might even make me their leader. Like so that's great. You know, but if they're like, we need someone who's quiet, athletic, and always on time. I'm like, fuck, I have like 0% of those things. So I guess, I guess I'm out, you know? I, you know, like we don't, uh, yeah. So I always like, people think I was exaggerating, but I, li I actually keep a running list of things I can offer just in case of invasion in my phone. And I update it from time to time as I like get new skills or as I realize that I'm actually not good at something that I thought I was good at. Um, because you know how it is like when someone catches you like off guard and then like you can't think and speak, mm -hmm. I'm sure in case of invasion, I wouldn't be able to think and speak. So I like to have these things ready to go. Um, what are those things? It's good to be prepared. Wait, I, I have the list. Wait, let me get it out for you. Because we have boobs. We have comedy. I know. Well, imagine I was like, that's it. Actually, that's it's, it's it. just those two things. <laughs> um, no, my hair is getting stuck to the mic. Uh, so I have, uh, number one, I am smart but not a genius. So smart enough to do shit and understand tasks, but not smart enough to be a know-it-all and annoying, mm. which is important because nobody likes those people. No. Um, but like if they gave me like, you know, like a, ta like a task list, I could definitely do that. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, can make omelets, soup, and buffalo chicken dip. You can? Yes. Ooh. And that's obviously the, basically the essentials to anybody's diet. Um, so those are good. Number three, organized. You know, don't clutter the ship, you know, limited amount of space. Can't just walk out at any time. So you got to keep it nice. Uh, number four, this is my personal favorite. Great at human sex and in time could very well be good at alien sex. I think so. Right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's not too bad yet. Five. Oh, this so was runner up in the middle school geography B. Really? Yes. Wow. I was beaten by Patrick Wu and he went on to be like, I don't I think he graduated almost at the top of my class. So it was also like it was stiff competition too, and I was number two. So um but honestly, like I've lost all that knowledge, so, so it's no help today. No, I might have to take that one off the list, honestly. Uh number six, smells nice and has good hair, usually. Uh, number seven, read all of the Harry Potter books. So I'm obviously very cultured. Absolutely. Um, and last but not least, number eight, I went to space camp. Really? No. <laughs> but I, but I watched Interstellar like 20 times. So it's basically the same thing. I think so. I feel like a, you know, like a 30 year career at NASA. But if you also, if you watched Interstellar a couple times, like really. I, what's... I won't. I'll never watch Interstellar. What? No, thank you. I've had, Al, I've had enough I'm going to walk movies. out of this podcast right now. I've had enough of these space movies. But that's the best space movie other than Spaceballs. Spaceballs is great. Gravity is great. 
And I had another. Oh, the other, the new one with uh, Brad, uh, Brad Pitt at Astra. Astra. I'm not watching that. No, thank you. No, it was good though. I, I had enough. After Gravity, I don't need any more space movies. Dude, come on. Are you like Star Wars? Love Star Wars, but it's different. It's not our space. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's true. That's more like a little bit fantasy, but Interstellar is like a good, good movie. I'm surprised you say that. And also watch. Matthew McConaughey, like... Yeah, Nolan, you gotta watch. I would watch him like read the fucking dictionary for a couple hours if he wanted to. Like, I don't really care. I loved him in, uh, what was like his, one of his first movies was, um, well, actually Fool's one of his... Gold? No. <laughs> you don't like Fool's Gold? No, I did not watch that. But one of his first movies was he was in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. He was? And the whole time, all he does is grunt because he's like, fucked. And so like it's and we were like watching it one day and like my uncle was like, what do you think they told him when they were training him? They were just like, just just grunt and sweat the whole. That's his whole thing. Can you imagine? He had to like call his family and tell him that was like his first big movie. And then he got um the real, uh, not fat. Oh, my God. Dazed and Confused with yeah. Richard Linklater, which is like one of my favorite movies of all time. And so many famous people got their start in that movie. Ben Affleck, or maybe not their start, but they were in it, right? Um, ben Affleck was in Days and Confused. Yeah, he's um, O'Banion. He's like the the shitty one who goes around. He's really, like always, I, he's like the bully, and he he's like re-watch. a super senior. He goes back for like a fifth year because he flunked. I don't remember that. I got to rewatch. Oh come on! I got to rewatch. Um, yeah, there's a lot of famous people. I'm trying to think of who else. He, oh, you know who's he actually kind of went off the deep end but that uh what's his name something jason london or james london the main character the guy mm. uh mila jovovich is in it really al i i i've seen it once when i was a kid dude oh, i gotta rewatch we're gonna have to you know who the aliens wouldn't want to take the guy who didn't see that movie wouldn't watch <laughs> interstellar <laughs> and is buying two maybe actually the pizza might save you they might be like that's a good deal that's al maybe deal. We'll keep them around in some, some capacity. Sure they, I don't know if they'll get that. That deal is only available once every four years. Mm, probably. Do you think there's... I feel like people always say that they don't think aliens exist because we haven't figured out a way to like travel like you know further outside of the galaxy. So therefore, they haven't. But I'm like, well, it's kind of like a like a trash assumption because how do you know that they're not smarter than us and they've figured it out like we're assuming that they only have the same capability as we do that's possible i don't think that's the truth though i truly believe the only aliens that exist are like little insects i think we're looking for the wrong things you think they're like little probably like bacteria exists in other you know planets i don't think like actual human type life forms exist you don't no don't tell me that. You're like crushing my dream. That's like my exit strategy at this point. <laughs> Fucking coronavirus, Trump, everything's a disaster all the time. Like, no, I think we're a freak accident. I really do. Really? That. Yeah, I think we don't we don't really exist anywhere else. Wow. Maybe it's anyone's like I like I always say like who you know who knows it's a yeah. toss up. And even if they are real, like you know I'm hoping they like tits and ass, but really it's anyone's game. Yeah. Um, I just think everyone should get a list together. Um, and be prepared. Fail to plan, plan to fail. Email us your list. Yeah, email us your list at uh, what is it? It's b h i f pod at gmail dot com. Yes. Um, let us know what you think you have to offer the aliens. I um, I actually also hate that I just said fail to plan, plan to fail because I feel like that's some bullshit your high school football coach <laughs> would say. And I don't like. I'm not really into sports. Um, but I do like. Uh, UFC and I only really like it because it's like a bunch of tattooed guys like running around in tight shorts like sweating and being aggressive like that's really the only appeal to me like dudes will be like oh yeah he threw a right hat and I'm like all I'm noticing is the shorts and the abs and the tattoo like that's it um I don't like, really care about like his skill set football you know? doesn't do it for you they got those tights on no, they're all covered up dude yeah I guess you're right it's not the same and also like that's like a team sport like what about wrestling uh, like WWE? Yeah. No, because that's oh, controversial because that's not real. So yeah, but it's it's as real as UFC. Come no, on. come on, it's that's not shit. true, it's dude. The same shit. Nobody's gonna allow you to get beaten to death in the U. Like I can't. It doesn't happen in UFC. I mean, you get hurt, but so you get hurt in wrestling too. I think some guys in the UFC though, like, would fight to the death if it was allowed. Like the like Nate Diaz. Like mm. I 100 percent think that that guy's like. You know, like his, he would be fine with dying in the ring. Like he that's wants to an, go that's an out. Act. Stone Cold Steve no. Austin has the same 
outlook on, in life. Don't. That is so insulting to the <laughs> to the UFC people. You're insulting to the WWE people. No, I like, I am not, I, listen, I like Ric Flair, that 30 for 30 haunts me. Mm. I was like full on like Kleenex. I was crying. I went out and I bought his merch afterwards. Like I fell, I didn't even know who he was. I fell in love with him after that. I, um, so I'm, yeah. And I like the rock. Like they're, you know, they're the best. Yeah. I grew up in the nine. Like I remember like people being into those guys. Um, but you know what? I was thinking the other day when I was watching, um, I was watching one of the fights. I was watching UFC that I feel the same way watching UFC that I think guys do when they go to strip clubs. <laughs> um, like, I, like I know what I'm witnessing is not the best of humanity. Um, you know, or like the best of humanity in the, you know, as far as like what they have to offer in entertainment value. And yet I'm still really enjoying myself like witnessing this. Could you masturbate to UFC? If I, yeah, I mean, in the bar, yeah. probably no, but like, I'm not gonna like rub one, <laughs> but like, I would, uh, but at home, yeah, I just, uh, there's just something about it. I think it like appeals to like both things. I think appeal to like our base, like, you know, basic instincts of like, we like aggression, we like sex, like, but it, I do, I think it's like a moral dilemma. Like, these people are like abusing, you know, their bot, their hot bodies, I might add, um, and exploiting themselves, I think, for our entertainment. And like I know there are people out there who would be like, oh, like fighting and stripping are like nothing alike. But you'd be wrong if you said that. Because think about it. Like think about like fighters and strippers both. You need to be in tip top shape. You have to learn a very particular set of skills that require both strength and, you know, or like some level of physical prowess and precision, right? Like some type of like artistic precision. Competition's fierce. There's always someone younger and better than you, like two steps behind. Your career is at best, what, 10 to 15 years if you're lucky. And the majority of your fan base is sweaty dudes with low self-esteem. Wow. So Never thought of it that way. Yeah, you're right. They have a lot in common. And also when I say stripping, I'm not talking about the girls who just like walk on stage naked and do some like light pole work. Like because that's, you know, or they look like they're like white people dancing at a wedding. It's like a, just like a little bit in the hips, but that's like the most you're getting. Otherwise, they'll get injured. Like I'm talking about the girls who are climbing up poles 15 feet. You know what I'm talking about? Like yeah. 15 feet in the air and like sliding down only using their thighs and are like gr- like gracefully twerking the whole way. That shit is impressive. Did like, you see the video recently of the girl falling off the pole? Yes, I did. That's like and it's painful to watch, but. That's like actually a wild video. But think about the fact that actually most of these women are doing that every night and they're totally fine. I'm like, how? Like that is really like that's an acrobatic like Cirque du Soleil level shit that you're doing up there. Yeah. Um, And also like you're self-taught because where's the school for that? There's definitely a school, but I don't know of it. No, but that's just it. Like, I feel like I, we would have heard of. I probably would. I'm surprised I haven't been commissioned by now to like or they haven't like tried to recruit me. Um, But you, I'm just. You think you could do it? No, no, no. I was just going to say that, like, I think both of those jobs are hard, like using my thighs to spin around 15 feet in the air, naked and four inch heels or getting savagely beaten by somebody in the octagon. Like either way, I'm, I'm you know, coming out of paraplegic from either one of those scenarios. <laughs> like I will literally get f- my whole body. My spine will break from trying to do either of those jobs. Well, no, no, one, no one's going to match you up with a UFC fighter that you see on TV. It would be fair that you got matched up with another lady your size. Um, yeah, but I'm talking about skill level. Yeah. Like, and also the women in the UFC are no joke either, dude. No. They could kick. Like, um, what's her face? Like, I think she's retired from the UFC now, but Gina Carano. Mm-hmm. And she's in... Uh, Star Wars. Yeah, she's in Mandalorian. Yeah. Um, yeah, some of these women, dude. Like, I don't know. And some of them are like really hot too, which is like kind of throws me because I'm like... They're like kind of masculine, but yeah. they're like also like. I, I don't find them attractive when they're in the ring. And that's just me. I'm not saying they're not uh, attractive people. I'm just saying when I watch them in the ring, I know some of my guy friends are like, whoa, she's hot. I'm not feeling it. You're not into that. Uh, they're all sweaty and full of back acne and <gasps> have braids on. I, oh, I can't. Shit. Uh, that's not for oh, me personally. Oh, shit. You're, uh, it's getting controversial. Yeah. <laughs> but also, you, we've discussed this before, like in the bedroom, you're a pacifist, dude. I am. Guys yeah. who like to be dominated That's obviously true. would be really into that. That's true. Um, or even guys who dominate might be into it because it's like a challenge, you know? It's like kind of like that taboo thing of like every once in a while you want something that's like you don't normally do. Yeah. So 
I don't know. But also... All I can think about is when they're wearing these UFC outfits is how how much swamp ass there is in there. Ugh. Yeah. Well, that's they're like, humans. That's like anybody, though. I feel like I saw like a clip of like they thought that like James Harden like shit himself during one of the... I'm like, oh my God, I can't even like... Yeah. I, oh, that's awful to me. It happens. Oh, no. I would like... That would be like a career ender for sure. But... It, oh, and then another thing they both have in common is that like... At the end of your career, you're all worn out and people just want to discard you. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, people are not running around like looking for a man with like cauliflower ear and like, you know, PTSD from getting like, you know, smashed in the ring. They're not looking for chicks, you know, with bad knees and fucked up thighs. Like, so. I've seen like a 55 year old stripper. Uh, oh, in action or in just action. in the. Uh, and what was that like? I, it was acceptable. It wasn't. It wasn't the weirdest okay. thing. All right. It wasn't All right. the weirdest thing. All right. So I'm saying there's a little more life in in stripping than there is UFC. I think. You think? I don't know. Some guys end up parlaying their career afterwards, but not all of them. Mm -hmm. You know, like some of them become like you know commentators or whatever, and they can kind of. But a lot of them kind of just. I feel like they get forgotten about. So it's like we you know we don't take care of our retired strippers. We don't take care of our you know former UFC fighters, and we have our poor veterans buying their limbs in the same place as the pussies buying their orthotics. <laughs> Shit in this country has to change, dude. I can't. So if you have a favorite stripper or a favorite UFC fighter, tell them you love them today. I feel like... Yeah, and know. email us your favorite stripper and UFC fighter. Oh, yeah, and also, email, and the, yeah, in addition to your alien lists, I actually do really want to know that. So please, if you do, yeah. And you have to send in both. Like, it has to be, like, you know... Favorite UFC fighter, or favorite else, stripper. Or else no response. Well, I'll also take a porn star, by the way, like instead of a stripper. Not that they're the same. Yeah. Just want to put that on record. But I, but yes, well, you know, if you have a favorite webcam girl or a favorite porn star, uh, we will also take those submissions as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I feel like, what are we at? Uh, half hour. All right. Um, should we end it there? Do we I feel think, good I about think, that? I think that was good. I feel good about that. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so until next... Oh, next week, actually, we have our uh, our very first guest on. Who's that? Faisal Lawrence. That's right. The Faisal Lawrence, who actually, his, uh, he's a comedian now, a very good comedian, I might add. Um, but before that, he was a, a man known as the Iron Sheik uh, from WWE. So if you have any WWE fans out there, this it's actually him. Um, but he had some work done. He looks younger and he's doing comedy and he's doing well, you guys. So really excited to uh, have him on and introduce you to him. He's very funny. Very funny. All right, until next time. Whoa, 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 Bree Hunter is fucked.